observations with Robert Meyer Burnett. Hello, Rob. I hope this letter finds you well. I want to give my perspective as an industry leader in this particular field. I have worked for the theater chains for 20 plus years. I feel there is no voice to speak out in the industry for all those people that were furloughed. Everybody is looking at the industry from the fans, streaming platforms, and the studio's perspective. I feel that the people who work in the theater industry are not being covered. While I'm not in the industry currently, is anyone? I feel like I have to be a voice for all those who will lose their careers. I don't think people realize how serious this is for us who made it a career. Like, take me for example. I've worked my way up to a general manager of my own theater, and not, now I will never see another customer come through my doors again. The joy and glee I used to see as customers come through with excitement and happiness will soon end. You don't know how it feels unless you've been in the industry. There are people, for example, a sound technician that would service our projectors. That person will be out of a job, being phased out like a bad part. This really saddens me. It really breaks my heart to see as theater industry professionals were in the end game now. I know a technician personally that has worked as a screen technician for over 48 or 40 years, and he's 68 years old. So what is he to do after losing his job? Find another job in another field? Most likely, he will find it very difficult to find a job being how old he is. And there are plenty more examples of hardworking professionals that will be without a job. For me, I've already looked forward to my future stepping away from theaters, but not leaving the industry itself. Because I really do love the industry and movies in general. I saved up enough money for my own studio and now have my own channel on YouTube. But other people in my field aren't so lucky. They, experience, they expected to work full careers, but with the pandemic speeding up the demise of the industry, now theaters will basically be a novelty just like drive-in movies. And just like drive-ins, they will ultimately at some point, like drive-ins, be phased out entirely. And right there, well, that makes me truly sad. So no disrespect to anybody. This is just my opinion from a perspective of an industry professional from the theater side of things. This will conclude my letter, so thanks for reading it. You and John Campia have been doing such an amazing job and are my favorite content creators to watch. That's very nice of you. Thank you. On that note, I wish all my fellow Imagination connoisseurs a great day. Sincerely, Cosmic Quest. Well, Cosmic, uh, again, a fantastic letter. Uh, thank you for writing it. Look, to me, uh, movie theaters have always been, since I was a little kid, places of magic. Uh, I, I've been going to them for whatever reason. I, I love movies as a little kid. My parents indulged my love of films and took me to films and, and even like for whatever reason, my mother, I've talked about my mother who is, is like the least imaginative person on the world in the world. She's the most pragmatic woman I've ever known for whatever reason, even from the time I was a little kid. And the first one I remember her taking me to that she actually went in, I was nine and it was it was Logan's Run. Now we had been going to 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 movie theaters, but the first movie that I remember in my life, uh, uh, over the moon about, like oh my god, I have to see this was was Logan's Run, and and my mom opening night took me. I mean that was the first time like I was aware that a movie was coming out. Like there were movies that were playing. Like my parents would be like, I wasn't like I was looking through the calendar section, the Sunday calendar section, going, "Ooh, what movies are opening Friday?" I, you know, I wasn't that kid yet. Even though I love movies, I was like TV. There was no home video. It was 1976. But my mom took me to see Logan's Run, and I saw it at the John Dan's Theater in Bellevue, Washington, which isn't there anymore. It's where I saw Star Trek: The Motion Picture. It's where I saw Superman the movie. It was this gigantic gigantic open box this massive screen it was also the headquarters of sro the sterling recreation organization and um i it was mind-blowing you know and 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 to me the the thing about the movie theater experience and growing up i was only really only went these other than crossroads these giant theaters 
these single screen theaters before multiplexes. It was giant. So you'd go into a, even as a kid, you walk into the room but when the lights were on, you're looking at the, this room was huge. You know, it was this gigantic. And sometimes there would be these, I, I liked it best when there were curtains over the screen where you had the big, like these gigantic curtains, you know, and you could actually hear the creaking of the gears and stuff as well. As the, as the curtains parted and the, the whole experience, I mean, as a kid, you're, it was magic, you know, and, and the only other rooms that I were in, that I was ever in that there were that big were synagogues and churches. So in my mind, it was like, man, you know, if you're not going to see God, well, then this is the next best thing. You know, being in those movie theaters, that was awesome. I, I love that. <laughs> so I, I don't want movies uh, to go away either. You know, I, I but again, I think that unfortunately... Times change, people change, and I'm I'm hoping that movie theaters will bounce back because people will realize how much they miss going to the movie theaters. Like like, do I? I have one theater in particular, which is the the ArcLight, the the Cinerama Dome here in Hollywood. I know some some people it's not their favorite theater. <clears throat> they upgraded <clears throat> they upgraded the projection to laser projection, uh, and for for Force Awakens. And ever since then, the, I love it. I love going there. And Elizabeth will tell you, I always got tickets for all the new summer blockbusters. I like going to see it. Like the Thursday preview night, the first showing, we have dinner at the Arclight. And then we go see the movies. And usually it's a bunch of people that I know and everybody's excited. And again, you sit in this gigantic cavernous room under this geodesic dome. And it fucking rules. And I, I love it. I haven't been there for a year. This month. This month marks well. It's now February, so this is now this is now the the thirteenth month. The last time I saw a movie was February of in a theater was February of twenty twenty, in my entire life. And I, I I feel your pain. I think everybody who's an imagination connoisseur feels your pain. It fucking sucks. You know, I I want to go back to the movie theaters. I want I want my I want my whole life back. I mean, it's been a weird. You know, I'm hoping maybe that that things will come back. Maybe I look at it this way because I'm an optimist. And and the thing is, I'm an optimist knowing that, you know, death sucks. I, if someone said, Rob, would you rather be immortal or, or I'd rather be immortal. I would have no problem living forever. I'd love to see history and be amazing. I would not get bored. It would be a lot of fun uh, to live forever. But knowing that I'm going to die at some point, being an optimist, you know, you're like you have to look at it like, hey. Being alive is pretty cool, and your your life is limited, and I know that. But but I do. I'm always I'm always going to be optimistic, even though I know at the end of things I'm I'm going to die, which sucks. But okay, unless maybe eventually my I can download my mind into a long a uh, generational starship, so I can just you know it might take ten thousand years to get to the next star system, and people be will be in cryogenic freeze. But if I could download my personality into a generation ship, I would do that. It'd be cool, so I could kind of be immortal. But knowing you're going to die, I still look forward to the time. I, I get up every day going, hey, man, it's good to be alive. So I'm an optimist. I believe that theaters are going to come back. I mean, I know that the theater industry was on a long, slow decline anyway, and it might change. But I think people want to go back to the movie theaters. I think people, you know, when you I don't want to watch a big Marvel movie uh, on TV. I don't want to watch Godzilla versus Kong on TV. I want to go to the Arclight. I want, I want to be with my popcorn i like now that they sell alcohol there i want to have my wine in my hand and my diet coke i want to be sharing popcorn with elizabeth where we both have one tub of popcorn and we're each putting our hands in it i miss i miss rubbing her hand with my hand we put it in the popcorn i like that i miss that where it's going to come back i promise you it's going to come back it might be different but it's going to come back i think um you never know <laughs> 